Okay, Perry, so welcome everybody. Thank you thank you for joining Perry's um, Zoom session. I'm not going to say much other than to turn it over to Perry and he can manage the call as he chooses. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, I'd like to start uh, by making just a, a few introductory comments um, and then turn it over to, to questions that you have. Um, if we don't finish the questions, I'm glad to schedule another session uh, next week uh, to, so that everyone is fully satisfied. <clears throat> so um, we're not newbies to Kiowa. Uh, we bought our land in 1999. Uh, we became permanent residents, full-time residents in about 10 years ago. Uh, and so we've seen a, a lot of development. We've seen both good development and, and bad development. Um, my career included time in academia as the chairman of the Department of Pharmacology at the University of Pennsylvania uh, and time in industry. I headed neuroscience drug discovery at, at Bristol Myers Squibb. I've been on multiple boards, both not-for-profit boards, uh, small biotechs and, and publicly traded company boards. And from that experience, I've, I've learned a lot about what makes boards work, what makes them work well, uh, how board members need to cooperate with each other in order to be optimally uh, productive. Uh, about a year and a half ago, a number of us became increasingly concerned uh, by threats to the natural beauty of, of Kiowa. Uh, and so a group of us founded a 501c3 called Preserve Kiowa. And Preserve Kiowa is committed to supporting uh, good governance and responsible development. Uh, I want to uh, note a couple of things that, that we have been involved with uh, over the last year and a half, and I'm going to divide them in, into half. The first three are, are things which I think we deserve uh, significant credit for because they are things that, that we really did do. Uh, the next three are things where we just participated and cooperated and, and, and sort of helped some of the homeowners associations with particular issues. So first, um, the town of Kiowa Planning Commission approved a one-year extension of the plat to develop Sam Spit. Uh, and Preserve Kiowa uh, filed an appeal of, of that decision. Uh, the attorneys from Scalps, the South Carolina Environmental Law Project, uh, served as our attorneys in this. I was one of the plaintiffs on that suit. Um, at the moment, there is no approved plan to develop Sam Spit, period. So I think of that uh, as a victory. And, and as I said, we were the plaintiffs on that appeal. Um, secondly, uh, we have, have demanded that Kika uh, take steps to reform the way the ARB is, is being handled. It's taken us a lot longer to to get from that demand, a, a pre-derivative suit demand, to get it to actually filing a claim. It was in part because we were simply short of funds and we've only recently had enough funds to be able to pay the attorney fees to actually draft the complaint. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm hoping uh, that that will go forward and go forward fairly soon. Uh, because I'm a candidate for the Kika board, I have taken my name off of that suit uh, and I'm recusing myself from all further uh, discussions and, and around that, that particular suit. And then finally, about three months ago, uh, PK identified and brought to the attention of members of, of the Kika board a requirement in the ARDA for the partners to transfer between four and 5,000 acres of marshland to Kika. Uh, as of this moment, 3,500 acres have, have been transferred. Uh, there are other issues that have come up as part of that, uh, involving both transfer of land on Sam Spit to Kika and the building of a natural conservancy uh, on Sam Spit uh, that needs to be registered with the state of South Carolina. Uh, and so I think of those three things as examples of things that I and, and Preserve Kiowa uh, have, have actually done and have made a difference. Um, when a proposal to develop a new shopping center called Andel West came out, um, there were a, a lot of problems with that proposal. And so Preserve Kiowa uh, developed, circulated, and reported uh, a survey to get respondents' opinions of that development. And about 80% of the people who responded were opposed to that development. Um, Peter Schneider, who represented both the Kasik Homeowners Association and Preserve Kiowa, was, was the lead uh, of terms of interacting with the developer 
to try to modify that, that development. Uh, I interacted with Peter probably on a bi-weekly basis for close to a year um, and had some influence in terms of, of the way that development has progressed. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that the new development that is going forward uh, is dramatically improved over the one that, that was originally proposed. Um, we worked with the uh, people in the vicinity, homeowners in the vicinity of Mingo Point, and I know I see that Anne is, is on this call, um, and to, to try to support them in their efforts to oppose the expansion and the relocation of the uh, kayak commercial dock on, on the, the creek, on, on the river. Um, I actually visited the, the site and when they were looking and showing what they were actually proposing to do. And then I spoke at the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. Uh, the zoning board turned down their request to expand the dock a four to, by a four to one vote. Uh, we're currently monitoring and are, are involved or trying to help um, with experienced real estate attorneys who are leading the effort to correct deficiencies in the planned and existing building on Beachwalker Drive. Uh, these deficiencies include uh, inadequate parking, inadequate control of, of water. Uh, there are, are a number of problems and we're trying to help if we can uh, in those efforts. So finally, uh, let me identify a couple of priorities that I would have uh, if I'm elected uh, to the Kika board. Uh, the first is that I would immediately move for Kika to take action to uh, eliminate the developer's seat on the Kika board. Uh, it's, I think it's inappropriate that they still have a seat on the board uh, and I would move to have that, that reversed. That will require a change in, in the covenants. Uh, secondly, Kika is a third party beneficiary of the ARDA. Uh, and as such, there is land on Sam Spit that needs to be transferred to Kika. Uh, and I would, would move to, to pursue that uh, and get that to happen. Um, Toki also, which as a signatory of the ARDA, uh, has already sent a demand letter uh, to the partners uh, asking them to address the obligations that they have uh, in the ARDA. Uh, and then finally, uh, traffic- This meeting is being recorded. I'm sorry? Oh, so finally, I wanted to say that traffic on and around Kiowa has become a, a major concern. I think that Kika should work with Toki to address traffic particularly at the front gate. Uh, in my opinion, we ought to investigate setting up a welcome center away from the gate at which passes could be obtained and allow people to easily access uh, the island. It doesn't make any sense to me that we don't have the ability to electronically uh, give a, a guest, a visitor, a guest pass, that they have to actually stop and get a physical pass. Uh, and so that's something that I would think is, is a real uh, priority. So uh, in conclusion, I'm a long-term resident of, of Kiowa. I've demonstrated my commitment to protect and, and enhance our island. Uh, and I'll strive to make deliberations of the Kika board transparent so that property owners uh, can not only know what the decisions are, but can see the reasoning that led to, to those decisions. Um, I believe that a board should be accountable to the desires and, and the needs of property owners. And the members of the board need to work collaboratively with each other, with the, with the property owners, uh, with the developer, with the resort, so that, that everyone's rights and, and needs are, are respected and, and developed. Um, the goal is to make the Kiwa experience enhanced for everyone. So, so thank you for attending this and I'm considering my candidacy. Um, let me open it up for questions. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Um, you mentioned, and I, I like that you want to remove the ARB seat uh, from the board, and, and you mentioned um, covenant changes. How how do you expect that? Um, I mean, right now they've there's been a you know a move to have those covenants changed, but that didn't really go through. How how do you intend to? see that the board can can get this done quickly. So I think it's important to to recognize that this next election for the HECA board is a really important one. Uh, there are three seats turning over. Uh, and so there is a real opportunity uh, to, to really 
make changes in, in, in the priorities of the board uh, and in the things that it wants to do. Um, the the uh, uh, Alex Fernandez uh, proposed that a vote on the a covenant change to abolish the seat be made as part of this next Kika election. Uh, that motion was, was turned down. Um, I actually thought that was a very good way to do it. It's a very, it was a very efficient way to do it. Uh, other members of, of the board uh, felt that there were other changes that might want to be made. I'm not aware that there are major changes, but there are perhaps are modifications. The covenants are, have been in effect for a long time. Uh, so my, my thought is that once we get a, a new board in place, I'm hoping that we'll have the votes uh, to suggest that a vote be taken on, the co on a covenant change to eliminate the developer's seat on the, on the board. And should the developer seat have a vote for that covenant change? No, the, yeah. the developer seat has to. The developer's representative uh, has to recuse from decisions that affect the developer. Yeah, I hope so. You're right. I'll ask a question. Uh, I am very opposed to closed meetings of the Kika board. And I think there have been far too many closed sessions. Um, I wouldn't dignify them with the label executive session because in my mind, executive session comes from the sunshine laws, which would limit them under the uh, conditions to legal matter, personnel matter, that kind of thing. Uh, I think the Kika board has a history of having closed sessions when they're discussing I issues that might be controversial. And I um, reject the notion that a closed meeting is appropriate because it's controversial. Uh, I can see that there'll be some issues coming up to the board that will be controversial. So for example, would you support a closed session to discuss eliminating uh, the developer's seat on the board? So my answer to that is, first of all, that I completely agree with you. There have been too many of those. They ought to be restricted uh, to situations that are dealing with uh, with salaries or personnel matters. Or, or the, Not the, salaries, or, because salaries are our money. Um, I'll have to, I, I'd have to think think that through. With my understanding, uh, I think typically the in salaries the, uh, are, are, are considered confidential. No, I don't think so. Even okay. under the public meeting laws, they talk about personnel matters being disciplinary. But in a public body, for example, what is paid to teachers, for example, is very much a matter of public record. Okay, uh, I, I'll, yeah. I'll take that as, as something that I that I need to understand yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, but the the other example of a time when you need an executive session is if you're getting legal advice, um, and 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 that we will, will I think have to remain. However, uh, the agenda for an executive session needs to be published in advance. The executive session should be as short as possible to, to take care of the business at hand. Uh, and then the results of the executive session ought to be brought back to the general, me to the general meeting. I completely agree that when you go to a, a, a meeting of Kika uh, and it gets quickly adjourned for an executive session that goes on for an hour or more, that's silly. Uh, and it's a waste of everyone's time. Well, it, it's more than silly and more than a waste of time. Uh, to me, it, it, it offends me as a community member and as a property owner that the board that represents my interests decides that I shouldn't hear what they're thinking. Um, on the topic of legal um, advice, there is a way to turn any issue into receiving legal advice. I've not... I go to many of the Kika board meetings, either in person or by video, and I don't recall a time when there has been a lawyer present at a meeting. And yet many topics that arise at meetings go into these private sessions. There's no lawyer present. Uh, and I, I can't think of any reason that would justify that. So I'm hoping that your position will be firmly against closed sessions and that you will argue for that point. Uh, it worries me a little bit because is it Preserve Kiowa that has made demand letters? Yes. And those 
then require legal advice. And I wondered whether the objects of Preserve Kiowa would be better served by not escalating, uh, which a demand letter is an escalation. A lawsuit is a bigger escalation. And it requires parties to take opposite views and to use executive session. And I wonder if if that's the right model so, uh, for collegiality on the board. So I, I would, would respectfully uh, disagree a little bit. Um, I think that a demand letter is actually a fairly mild start. It's a demand oh, no. that, that you consider what we're talking about and consider taking action to respond. Uh, well, Pika uh, actually, has not responded to our demand letter, uh, except uh, to say, give us some more time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if they don't respond, then you have no choice but to escalate to a suit. Well, I come from a legal background, having <laughs> practiced law for many years. I think a demand letter has a legal tenor to it. And it does, it, it, it does require that you send that on to the attorneys. And so my thought is that to the extent possible, issues don't um, escalate to the level of needing lawyers and op opposing sides, but rather uh, measures that induce collegiality. I don't think a demand letter promotes um, collegiality. I don't think a lawsuit promotes collegiality either. I, I agree, but it, sometimes you have no choice. Um, I mean, in, in my view, um, the the uh, offenses, if you will, uh, of the ARB uh, have affected all of us. Um, the the bureaucracy, the commingling of, of of property owners' funds with developers' funds, uh, the imposition of fees which are not uh, justified by the covenants, uh, the the developer seat on the ARB, uh, and and remember. Um, that in the ARDA, the developers agreed to relinquish that seat, but it never happened. Uh, and the revised covenants, that seat is back in there. Uh, and so it, it's, I think, fairly clear that if we're going to make progress on these issues, it's going to take some strong action. I, I don't disagree that it's better to, to do it as, as colleagues, but if, if you can't, you can't. Well, I think we'll probably disagree on some of those measures um, in, in terms of how much you would put into a closed session. Um, I, I hope that we're in better agreement on that. I think we're in close agreement on that. It should be the absolute minimum that, that is required. I'll, I'll concede the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, the, the other thing I might add, though, um, is that a conversation of the kind that we just had is probably a really good thing. Um, that, you know, one of the, of the uh, precepts that I have, if you will, um, is that once an issue is, is identified, uh, I want to investigate it, I want to think about it, I want to come to a conclusion, but I then want to come back to the, to the people who raised it and, and see if, if they agree with my conclusion uh, rather than just proceed and take action. I can't hear you, Judy. No, I was on mute. Um, I think that you, you, you're you right. You don't want someone to just plow over you and never do anything that you want done. Um, but I, I think probably there are creative ways that you can effectuate more than jumping to a demand letter or a lawsuit. And I've probably made myself very unpopular on this call by saying that. I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I think maybe as a former litigator, I have a great respect for getting avoiding litigation. I would, I, I certainly, and I certainly agree. Uh, my own view is that we had reached the point where we weren't going to affect change unless we did something stronger. Mm. I don't know. Is uh, I mean I know Per you've shown you you've been at some of the Kika meetings, but was there a time that you could have as Preserve Kiowa spoken to um, one or two of the board members 
the ones who were um, anti or voting against, uh, you know, your your uh, or perhaps not answering the demand letter to talk actually to talk to them ahead of time about what the kinds of things were that you were interested in having done and then alert the community through either IKEA um, on what strong measures you really want to have taken and get the community involved that way. Um, is that, you know, did you did you speak at all to uh, to the board itself? So I had I, I met individually with Jerry McGee okay, uh, and talked about the ARB and about the things that I saw uh, that needed to be changed. Um, and he he wasn't particularly sympathetic to, to make those to make changes. Um, as, as you uh, I think, as you already have heard. Um, um, oh, I'm 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 blocking um, the the, uh, the the director's representative. Um, Amanda. That Amanda, uh, I think you, you may have heard Amanda quoted as saying uh, that the partners were never going to turn over the ARB, period. That That's despite the fact uh, that Kika has been paying a salary of, of a person to, quote, help with transition for, I think, 18 years. So, I mean, you know, you know getting back to, to, to Judy, I think there's pretty ample evidence that it ain't going to happen voluntarily. Well, hopefully it happens with the change in uh, in uh, board members. I'm sorry. And I hope it changes with the with the change in board members. Then I don't know all of the people who are running, but the, the, the most I know most of them, and most of the people who are running feel the same way that I do. Yeah, I'm going all the Zoom calls, so I'm trying to figure that out. So thanks. Right. I probably feel the same way you do but don't necessarily feel that the options have been fully explored. And when you work, when you work on a board, um, you have to rely a lot on collegiality and personal relationships. And um, things don't necessarily happen overnight. It takes a while to bring them to the public attention to get the community behind you, to build that community support, and then eventually uh, you'll you'll have your have your way. I I do I understand that. I have a quick question. Uh, I'm just wondering how much you know about the Sandcastle, the owners' concerns there, the task force that was implemented, and. Um, issues with the Sandcastle and the property owners? So um, I'm an occasional user of the Sandcastle. I've, I've exercised there sometimes. I took a, a class there. Um, I'm not a regular user. The, the view that I have uh, is that we have a, a Sandcastle users group. Uh, it's, a, I think, important to, to listen to the, the advice that they come back with and to the things that they identify as needs. Uh, the other point that I would like to make, though, um, is that Kiowa is a very complicated entity. Um, we have people who uh, live full-time on the island, people who are part-time, people who rent, people who don't, people who are members of the Kiowa Island Club, people who are members of the Governor's Club. Uh, and we have to respect all of these different constituencies uh, in deciding how to invest money and, and, and how much support to give uh, an entity like the Sandcastle. Clearly, an, an important facility and, and a, facility, a facility that needs to be uh, supported and developed. Uh, but I don't see an, an easy uh, way to simply write a check uh, to do the things that some people ha have asked for. Um, so I think that that my view would be uh, that it's an important facility that that Kika owns, uh, and that we have to listen to to a committee of users as to what they want. Okay, but there are a lot of property owners that are not happy with the new task force rules. I know. And um, unfortunately, people have to abide by what they say. So how would you work around that? I don't have an answer to it, to be honest. Um, the, the you, You're not going to be able to make uh, everyone happy in terms of, of time that, that they're uh, uh, family guests and all uh, can come in, can come in unaccompanied. Um, 
I, I don't have an answer to that one. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a problem we're going to have to live with and, and, uh, and, tr and try to, to inch our way to, to the best possible solution. Okay. So many little tabs up the top there. Um, I'm not very well informed about the transfer of Captain Sam Spit to Kika. Could could you say a little bit more about that? If, if that was in the covenants or the, one of the developer agreements? So, sure. So the uh, the ARDA, uh, I think it's paragraph 16F or something like that. Uh, in, and in, the ARDA included a, a map of Captain Sam Spit. It's a tricolor map. It's yellow, I think, light green and dark green. Uh, yeah, I've heard your uh, presentation where you went through the colors and that kind of gave me my base of information. Okay, but what so does it mean for Kika to an, to be, take ownership of the of the okay. pieces so of the, the ARDA calls for what's in yellow and light green. And the light green is is the, the land be hot between the, the developable highlands uh, and the the Okram line or below the Okram line up to high water mark. Both the light, the yellow and the light green are to be transferred to Kika. Period. That was was to be done by December 4th. The dark green, which is the developable part, uh, is not to be transferred to anyone, but it is to be converted into a, a natural wildlife preserve and recorded with the Charleston County. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit complicated because the Kika has really nothing to do with the dark green. The dark green uh, would, would be going to a, a natural conservancy. That's an agreement between the developer and Toki. And Toki, as I think you have heard, has sent a demand to the developer that they move forward on, on that transfer. The developer said they don't they don't have to do that. Okay. Yeah. Now the, the, let me finish one second though. The 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 yellow and the light green are land that is to be transferred to Kika. But Kika did not sign the ARDA. The ARDA was signed by Toki and by the developer. So Kika is what's called a third party beneficiary, so that we have are given rights under the ARDA, and we need to move to enforce those rights. Um, I believe that the Kika board uh, discussed this yesterday uh, and did not take action uh, in terms of, of formally demanding uh, that that those third party beneficiary rights be exercised. Uh, I believe that that at least some members of, of the Kika board uh, wanted to accede to a request on the part of the developers uh, to delay things by 60 or so or so days. So, okay, now question. Yeah, what I'm wondering is what would be the impact on Kika to take possession of those pieces of property? Uh, what would be the upkeep and the liability and so forth? Um, it, is it really worth so so my to have it put into a, a conservancy sure. so so my understanding is uh, that it would be relatively minimal up, upkeep or and relatively minimal increase in liability remember that the partners have transferred in i guess in november or december uh, 3500 acres of marshland that was transferred to kika and kika accepted it so obviously they've looked at the at the liability and and the cost and, mm. and concluded that that was not an issue. Uh, my belief is that transferring parts of of Sam Spit to Kika would fall into exactly the same category. But but going one step farther, um, if that was transferred, I believe that it would significantly impact any potential ability uh, to do, to develop Sam Spit. Yeah, I, I, the, making it undevelopable, <laughs> making sure that it's never, ever, ever developed. Would be a really good thing, wouldn't would it? Would be a very good thing. But I wouldn't be pressing for ownership until I knew what the cost would be and what the uh, risks would be. And I, I hope someone's looking at that. I, I don't mean that it has to be you because 
you're not in that position yet, but um, I think that's a fair that's a fair question and a fair comment. My my belief is that that he could did that kind of analysis before they accepted thirty five hundred acres, which was I never heard a in, word about that. Maybe right? maybe. I, I never heard any analysis of that. Maybe they did. Maybe, maybe they. So, so the, the ARDA, it's, a, it's actually a little bit of an interesting story because the ARDA uh, called for the partners to transfer between four and 5,000 acres yeah. of marshland to Kika. Yeah. Uh, they have identified 3,500 acres, have transferred it. Kika has accepted it. Now, a question that, that I asked at the, at the last Kika board meeting was, is is there another 500 to 1500 acres waiting to be transferred or was the original uh, number of 4,000 to 5,000 just a guesstimate? And I don't have an answer to that question. But I, but I, I, I assume that people have done their homework and ha have concluded that it was, was not an unreasonable thing to accept 3,500 acres. I hope not. I hope someone did the homework. <laughs> Any questions? I'll bite again. Um, it's, aside from all the partners issues, what, what do you think are the main issues for the homeowners that uh, for livability and um, enjoyment and uh, you know, what are the things that you would be most uh, focused on um, away from all the partner stuff, but, but really focusing on what the, what the homeowners value and livability. What 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 kinds of things are lacking on the island, and what kinds of things are are far better? What what makes us, you know, what's going to make us stand out as a, as a as a great place to live? So the two things that that I would mention, uh, I've, one is one I've already mentioned, which is traffic. Um, it, you know, it's it's terrible and it's getting worse. Um, I'm I'm bothered by the fact uh, that Pika has um, the technology available to allow electronic gate passes so that, that we, as a homeowner, you could go online and could um, invite someone to visit and have them get a, an electronic gate pass. That hasn't been implemented and it, and it needs to be. Uh, I've already mentioned the idea of a welcome center. Uh, I think Andal West would be a perfect place for it. Uh, there's undeveloped land in Freshfield Village where it could be. It could even be further out on the island. It could be out uh, where the, the Little Pig, where the Ace Hardware store is. Uh, but but get the guest pass away from the gate so that we have two lanes going directly in without uh, without any delays. And then the second thing I, I would like to mention um, is is climate. Um, the, the climate change is uh, with us. It's going to get worse. Uh, I certainly would, would applaud uh, the six steps that Kika initiated to to, um, to try to deal with with road flooding. Um, as I understand it, five of those are completed and the sixth is half or two thirds or two thirds done. Uh, but this is not a, a, a one step fix and, and the problem solved. This is a, an issue that that's going to be with us indefinitely. And so we have to be very proactive at looking to see where there are problems and 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 then deal, and then dealing with them. Um, I, I've read the uh, Kika Goes Green uh synopsis that, that's been put out. Um, my, my view was that all of the things on it make sense. There were too many of them that were sort of phrased like, let's investigate the possibility of electronic vehicles. Um, I think we've got to do more than investigate. We've got to start in investing. Um, you know, electronic leaf blowers maybe don't solve every problem because when you have a large a lot, a commercial lot, uh, they don't have enough enough uh, capacity to to deal with it. Um, but where possible, we should certainly go to electronic leaf blowers. They're quiet, uh, they're non-polluting, et cetera. And, and so I think we have to 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 really push um, to to deal with the, the climate change with the goal of making Kiowa carbon neutral. Um, I put in uh, in my own home uh, what's called a smart sprinkler controller. Uh, and what this does is it doesn't look at whether it has rain and decide to postpone a sprinkling period. What it does is it looks at the weather forecast and it says, I think it's going to rain tomorrow. Therefore, we're not going to rain today. Um, and, and my water use went down by about a factor of two. 
um, I, I was I was on the um, Preserve Landscape Committee, uh, and we uh, recommended that that Kika look into that kind of technology. Uh, they invested, I think, seventy five thousand dollars in sprinkler uh, on in the preserve, uh, but I don't think they went to to really to a really smart system, which I wish I wish they had done. Um, so that would be the second big thing that that I, I would would mention. Um, I know that we're not allowed to have solar panels on Kiowa. That would be a big part of going green. I fully agree. I, I would would love it. Mm -hmm. You know the the you know one of I I've actually asked that question a couple of times and been told that the ARB won't approve it. Right, well, exactly. Uh, if it were my ARB, they'd approve it. Yeah, m mine too. So uh, how are we going to see that it becomes not your, but the the uh, our ARB? Um, I think I think that that's a negotiation that that, that needs to take place. Um, the partners have have announced um, that they're prepared to turn the ARB over. Um, there is a joint task force that has made two reports now. Uh, I thought that they've done a they've done a really excellent job. Um, the the what it looks as the direction it looks as if it's headed uh, is sort of a, a quasi independent uh, ARB that would ultimately report uh, to to Kika, but that would not be subject to to change in rules every time the Kika board changes. Uh, but that would would take responsibility uh, for for monitoring and, and taking care of it. There are a lot of issues that need to be worked out. Um, one is cost. Um, the ARB apparently costs the partners about a million dollars a year. Um, Kika is going to be not be going to be very happy uh, investing that that amount of money. However, the ARB does a lot of things it doesn't need to do. Uh, if you want to repaint your house in the same color, you shouldn't need to have an ARB process to, to get approved for that. You shouldn't have to pay a, a $250 fee, et, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think that the, the tasks of the ARB can be, can be refined uh, so that the, the um, costs might, might be controlled. The other thing that I think everyone has to recognize, and I wasn't aware of this until a couple of months ago, um, we have an ARB. But that ARB actually deals with three different sets of rules. So there's Keo Island, there's Kasik, um, and and then there's a, a third set. I, I, maybe it's the it's the commercial side. Um, but it may be that what we need to do is to set up an ARB and then have it do, for example, Kasik on a fee for service basis. Um, and so I think that there there are things to to do. Uh, I'm hoping that there are things that the partners will want. Uh, that can be negotiated and, and traded for an expedited resolution of the ARB issue. Um, they've said that they want to do it in the in the future, that they want to do it in phases. Uh, they've said that there are some conditions that will have to be satisfied, but they didn't specify what those conditions were. Uh, and so I, I think there's there's some work to be done, but there's also room to negotiate. Um, you know, frankly, I can't imagine why the partners want the ARB. It's got to be nothing but a headache to them. Um, and so I, I think that there's a, a way to move forward with that. They may be waiting until they um, they see the importance that it has to Kika, and they're waiting until they have something that they can bargain with. They won't really care. Um, I mean, my observation over the years has been that Kika caves to the partners way too much. And I think the primary thing was that piece of oceanfront property that... Um, was get, given away to them. Right. And that's just one example. That's a horrible example. I mean, a horrendous situation, but. So so I think that both Kika and Toki um, have been very beholden to the commercial uh, enterprise. Yes. Um, that they haven't pushed back 
uh, on either the partners or, or the resort. I think that's changing. Um, we certainly saw evidence of, of that with uh, the uh, uh, with the Toki meeting of, I guess, what was it, the day before yesterday, um, where, where they issued a demand that they deal with the, with the Sam Spit issue. Um, the, the makeup of of the um, of Toki and and of Kika is changing, and I think certainly with Kika, with three new uh, elected representatives, it's it's going to change. You know, um, one of the things that I was most concerned about was when the Toki Planning Commission voted to extend the preliminary plat approval for Sam Spit. It was clearly inappropriate to approve. Um, the the it was it didn't meet any of the requirements in terms of, of timing. It didn't meet requirements uh, of what could be done. Uh, the roadway that they were that's on that plat is pretty much underwater now, um, and yet the planning commission approved it. I don't think that would happen with the planning commission today. I think there's been been real turnover uh, on all of on all of, of the K's. And so I'm actually very hopeful uh, that we're going to be able to work together and we, we're going to be able to negotiate changes and to move forward. I've got to get off. My doorbell's ringing. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Perry, did you want to give it a few minutes for additional questions or did sure, you can, want to um, wait and see if other people have questions that they want to ask or, or things yeah. that they want to discuss? Um, and as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm I'm glad to continue this kind of discussion. Um, I have a a a, a Kika uh, email address. I also have a personal email address, and you can find that on any of the messages that I've sent out. Um, and if if people will send me a, a note or or a, a a text, I'll be glad to schedule uh, another meeting or a, or a coffee or or whatever makes the most sense. Does anyone on the call have additional questions for Perry or topics? Should we give everybody 15 minutes? Thank you, Perry. I'm back. <laughs> Mark, what you were gonna say? I was just thanking you, there was too much silence. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so Perry, as I mentioned um, at the top of the call, um, this has been recorded um, and it will be made available um, on the Kika website for folks that were not able to attend. They can hear the topics that were discussed. Thank you, Ellen. Well, I didn't intend to do so much talking, but I guess when other people don't speak, I feel in the vacuum. <laughs> But I wish, well, I you, you I wish had others had spoken. Perspectives, and I was glad to, to discuss those with you. <laughs> Ellen, I think we're done. Okay. Thank well, you. Thanks, all. everybody, for joining, and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone.